I am so pained that I can't imagine myself forgiving them. And this is probably with it even today. It's happened probably 20, 30 years. Some people 50 years ago. And they are still not able to let go. Even the person that you're trying to forgive might even be doing things that is still making you to be more angry. So what should we do? Should we forgive them or should we not? So this to so this message, it may not be for everybody. There are some people that don't have anybody that they have not forgiven. But it might be for some particular people that God is asking today that you need to let go and forgive. Forgiveness in the Bible appeared 127 times. And 39 times in the New Testament and 88 times in the Old Testament. The word forgiveness has two meaning in the Bible in the Old Testament. The first one is salah, meaning to practice forbearance, pardon, or forgive. It is never used of a, of a man forgiving another man, but only for God forgiving man. Also, the, the second word is nasa, which means to leave up, to take away, to bear, to bear up, to, to clear up or, or carry it. So those words in the Old Testament were used for man. Forgiveness was used in case of man, forgiving man. And in case of God, forgiving man. When you look at the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 12 to 15, can you displace? Let's read it. Matthew 6, verse 12 to 15 said, And forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtor. Go on. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 14. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Wait, over there. He said, go back to 14. He said, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So that's a condition. Which means you have to forgive. Then your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Go to 15. For if ye forgive no men their trespasses, neither with your Father, will your Father forgive your trespasses. So, why are you refusing to forgive? when you are preventing God from forgiving you. You pray. Most of us, I mean, maybe there are some people that are quite perfect, but most of us are not perfect. We sin every day. And when we sin, we go back to God, Father, please, I've repented. Forgive me of my sins. You will expect God to forgive you. But have you forgiven those that you're supposed to forgive? It's a condition. Forgive us our trespasses as you forgive those who trespass against us. Why are you not forgiving them? Why are you closing your door to God forgiving you? God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to give an example of people that have practiced of forgiveness in the Bible. Let's read the book of Genesis 34. Let's go to Genesis 34. You see there the story of uh, Jacob's uh, Jacob's son, daughter Dinah, and Shechem. He said, and Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which bear which she bear unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. Go ahead. And when Shechem, the son of Anor the Levite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and laid with her in the fire. Go on. And he saw clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel and spake kindly. Unto the damsel. Go on. And Shechem spake unto his father, Amon, saying, Get this damsel, 
damsel to, to wife. And Jacob heard that he has defied Diana, his daughter. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field, and Jacob ate his peace until they were come. And Hamor, the father of Jacob, went out unto Jacob to commune with him. And the son of Jacob came out of the field, and when they heard it, the man was grieved. The men were grieved, and they were robbed, because he has robbed fully in Israel, in line with Jacob's daughter, which things ought not to be done. And Hamor communed with them, saying, The Lord of my she the Lord of my son, she the soul of my son, Shechem, longeth for your daughter, and I pray you give her, you give him to wife. And make him marry with us, and give your daughters unto us, and take our daughters unto you. And you shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you dwell, and trade in there, and get your possession there. Shechem said unto her father, and un un unto her father, and unto the brethren, let me find grace in your heart, and what ye shall say unto me, I will give. Ask never, ask me never so much dowry and gift, and I will give according as ye say unto me, or give me the dancing to wife. And they said unto the, and they said unto them, We cannot do these things, give our sister to one that is uncircumcised, for that by a reproach unto us. But in this we will consent unto you, if you be as we be, that every male of you be circumcised. This will give, this then will we give our daughters unto you, and we take your daughters to us, and we will dwell, we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. But ye be acting not to be circumcised, and then we will take our daughters, and we will be gone. Wait over there. You see that what they did in that particular verse was. In that particular chapter was Shechem slept with uh, defied Dinah, uh, and the brothers were upset. They were hungry. Now, why would you go and defy it? But they tricked. They told the Shechem and his tribe, "We want all your people to circumcise." And if you read that further, they came back when they were circumcised, when they cannot fight. They killed all of them. And they took their properties and their children and their wives. They took them away. Why did they do that? Because they refused to forgive Shechem. Shechem knew what he has done. And he came with a reconciling mind. But the children of Jacob were not ready for that. Rather, they chose to destroy the entire people. You also go further. Another another, uh, another Bible verse about unforgiveness in the, in the, in the Bible is about sorry, no that's not forgiveness. It's about uh, Judas Iscariot. When you look at Judas Iscariot in the Bible when you look at Judas Iscariot in the Bible he, he refused to forgive himself. Do you know that Jesus Iscariot probably would not have gone to hell if he has repented and not committed suicide? But there are some of us that are fighting with that guilt that we have refused to forgive ourselves. Even God might have forgiven you, but you are not forgiving yourself. Because you feel that you don't deserve that forgiveness. Judas Iscariot killed Jesus Christ, an innocent soul. But if he had asked forgiveness, would he have been forgiven by God? The answer is most likely yes. But he killed himself. Another one is the parable of the unforgiven servant. In the scripture that Jesus Christ gave us, Matthew 18, 21 to 35. In there, you can read it later, but in there, you realize that Jesus Christ told us about the parable of that servant. The master of the servant forgave the servant for who he knew, and the servant was happy 
that the master has forgiven me. But there was another servant, also like him, that was owing him, and he refused to forgive that servant. He said, no, I cannot forgive you. Many of us, God has forgiven us, but we have refused to forgive others. When what you did to God, if a man does, did that to you, you will not forgive. God forgive you. The sin that you have committed might even be more than if anybody hears it outside, they say, wow, you, can you do this? So you did this. But the sin, or whatever the other person has done to you, is it up to what God has forgiven you for? But we keep, or rather, keep that own forgiveness and say, I don't want to have anything to do with him. I don't want to have anything to do with that. It's um, tooth for tooth, eye for an eye. He has taken my tooth, I'm going to take his tooth. He has taken the eye, I'm going to take his eye. So why are you not forgiving? Now, let me give examples of people that are forgiven in the Bible. Joseph. Joseph forgave his brethren, his fellow brothers. Genesis 50, 15 to 21. When you look at that, how many of us can forgive the way Joseph forgave his brother? Do you know what they did to him? They sold him, packaged him, and sold him off. And they didn't even blink about it. Do you know the kind of uh, pain that a slave goes through in those days? To move from one place to the other. They will tie them in shame. They will beat them. There are days they will not eat. They will go hungry. They will be walking in the farm for days before they get to their destination. And then the brothers now came to him. There was farming where they are, and they moved to where he was. And he still found it in his heart. To forgive them. Let's read it. And when Joseph's brought brethren saw their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us, and we certainly requit us of all evil which we had we should give unto him. Wait there, don't move on to the next one. Let, let's look at it. Should they should is, is is Joseph is it okay for Joseph to punish them? We will say yes. Who say, why would Joseph not hate them? Why would Joseph not punish them? Some of us are waiting for the time that power will be in our hands to deal with those people that have that have punished us. To deal with them. The day I get power, the day God bless me that I become rich, I, I will go back to that village and deal with those people. Because we refuse to forgive. We refuse to let go. Another example is in, in the scripture is Jesus Christ and the thief on the cross. When you look at Jesus Christ in that particular Luke 23, verse 23 to 43. An innocent man was nailed to the cross. And then they put two thieves beside him. Let's read it. He said that when they come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the male factor, one on the right hand and the other on the left, cried. And then Jesus forgives Father, Jesus, and then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted with his raiment and cast the Lord. Hold on, don't move to the next one. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Some of us will not say, Father, forgive them all. You see, if I come back again to this world, the way I will deal with these people. <laughs> some, of, some people will say their spirit will torment them all. That's what you'll be saying. That's what some people will be saying on the cross. But what's Jesus Christ saying? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they did. Go to the next one. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them, 
the rider them saying, He save others, let him save himself, he will be Christ. The chosen son of God. The chosen of God. And the churches also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar. And saying, If thou be king of the Jews, save thyself. And the superstition also was written over him in the letter of Greek. Superscription was written over him in the letter of Greek, saying, Letter of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, this is the king of Jews. So, and one of the main factors which was hung read on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuking, Does not that fear God seeing that at in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive due the reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing, has done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto me, Verily I say unto you, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Jesus forgave that thief on the cross. Some people will say, I, You are sinners. Look at what they are doing to me. Why should I forgive you? Why should I forgive you? The other um, other uh, example of forgiveness in the Bible is the prodigal son. This, the boy took the money. He took his inheritance and left. And disappeared. And he came back after suffering. What did the father do? The father embraced him. He embraced him and said, Come back. I have forgiven you. Brethren, forgiveness holds us back from what God is supposed to give to us. Unforgiveness. When you have unforgiveness in your heart, it's difficult to move. You might be thinking that you are 